time, it was Saturday, the 6th of March, 1965. The City Hall Cinema in Manhattan was about to premiere Andy Warhol's Empire, a triumphant new art film about the Empire State Building. Eager New Yorkers gathered together into a theater, preparing to watch the definitive film about their city's iconic skyscraper. The film was like no other. It ran a total of eight hours and five minutes, and it was screened at 16 frames per second. As the New Yorkers sat in their seats, awaiting for the projector to start, their sense of self-importance and artistic sophistication was ready to be fulfilled. They thought Empire would do it. This is what art looks like after all. Surely it would be worth it. Surely it would be groundbreaking. Surely it would be a film like no other. It was time. The film began. The audience laid eyes on the familiar sight. The visual prominence of the Empire State Building dominated the screen. Magnificent. A beautiful shot by cinematographer and fellow avant-garde filmmaker Jonas Mikas. The slight conversations turned to silence. The same shot continued, and continued, and continued. The New Yorker sat still, gazing upon the building. Then it hit them. This is all the film is. Eight hours and five minutes of this. And this. And a whole lot of this. Eight hours and five minutes of the same shot, the same familiar sight that the New Yorkers could just go outside to see for themselves. The film had only been running for 10 minutes, but the New Yorkers had enough. It was time. Around 40 of them stood up and angrily marched toward Mikas and another staff member, demanding their money back. They would not stand for this. Andy Warhol had done it. Within the first 10 minutes of a 485 minute film, he successfully turned New York against itself. This is Justin Westallo's substance. But is Andy Warhol's empire a work of artistic genius, or a cinematic con job, or both, or neither? Empire remains divisive to this day, and for understandable reasons. It's eight hours and five minutes of the same shot of the same building. But at the same time, there's something more to it. And things do happen. We see the sun set, we see clouds move, we see planes flying in the distance. Evening turns to night. Lights are switched on and off. A beacon flickers. To an active viewer of Empire, the little subtle moments we take for granted suddenly become interesting. It is when we are stripped away from every conventional sensibility associated with traditional filmmaking that these small minor details of everyday life become clear. Warhol discards any sense of narrative structure to bring his vision of raw cinema, this long, unedited shot. Once preconceived notions of what truly defines a film become tested, so too is one's patience. An active viewing of Empire may lead one to a unique state of immersion. However, its very design is so distant from cinematic convention that active viewing may be irrelevant. Exemplifying the outrageousness of Andy Warhol, Empire exists not to be seen, but to simply exist. Empire is an endurance test and a celluloid postcard, and it's not meant to be seen all the way through. Yet it has its place in film history, in all its minimalism and sense of grandeur. Automatically dismissing the occasional critical appreciation of Empire may stem from conservative biases of what film ought to be. If it's perfectly reasonable to appreciate still photography, in theory, it should be just as reasonable to appreciate something like this. Empire may not function the same way films tend to, because it functions in its own way, and can have lingering impact on the viewer, evoking emotion, whether positive or negative. But what really makes Empire a motion picture is its documentation of time. 
In a matter of minutes, empire goes from this to this. Yet in a longer span of time, it goes from this to this. Time. It's unbearable. It's tedious. It feels so long. Yet it also feels so short. We see time unfold before our eyes in this unique and quiet look at an iconic New York site. And upon reflection, we come to reevaluate and appreciate the time we often take for granted. Empire may be a film like no other. It may be ahead of its time. But regardless of one's appreciation and acceptance of its artistic merit, one should not blame those New Yorkers for turning on the film, feeling that their time was wasted. Because for them, it was. Others may find purpose and insight from spending their time watching Empire. This is the nature of time. To just about everybody, time is valuable. Time is precious. Warhol knew this. He chose to spend his time to bring us empire.